I got to be honest, when I first read this, it threw me back again into the old Miller Lite commercials. Tastes great, less filling, works faster, lasts longer. Anyway. You can start going down a rabbit hole when looking at this information on heartburn. I found that out real fast. All right. So some studies say that 20% of the adult population suffer with weekly symptoms of heartburn or regurgitation from gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD. Other studies have this number at more than 30% of the adult population. As many as half of all patients do not get any benefit from acid suppression therapy. The typical symptoms of GERD are heartburn or regurgitation. Atypical symptoms would be chest pain that's not related, that's not heart related. Um, and then some other symptoms would include cough, uh, dysphonia, which is difficult speaking, a sore throat, and globus, which is a feeling that you have a lump in your throat. Up to 70% of all patients with this issue do not have lesions in the distal part of their esophagus or the lower portion of their esophagus. These people have non-erosive reflux disease or NERD. Nerd, 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 nerd. Remember Revenge of the Nerds from the 80s? Anyway, flashback. Okay, all right. So these nerds go through periods where it's worse and then it disappears for a while, kind of like the people that have GERD, okay? So let's talk about the acid suppression treatments. There's the histamine H2 receptor antagonists or H2 blockers. These are used to treat duodenal ulcers, gastric ulcers, and Zollinger-Ellison disease, which is where the stomach produces too much acid. These H2 blockers basically decrease the amount of acid produced by the stomach. Now, there's also a protein pump inhibitor, or a PPI, and it does the same thing. The difference is the H2 blockers work faster, the PPIs last longer. I got to be honest, when I first read this, it threw me back again into the old Miller Lite commercials. Tastes great, less filling, works faster, lasts longer. Anyway, all right, I'm in an odd mood today. All right, so we've got, uh, we've talked about GERD, which is gastroesophageal reflux disease, and NERD, which is non-erosive reflux disease. So now we can talk about functional heartburn. So functional heartburn, which is persistent symptoms of esophageal reflux with no objective evidence of GERD, is the most common failure of the PPI or the uh, H2 blocker therapy because they, they're not having the too much acid to produce it. So this is often overlooked by the internist and the gastroenterologist. So let's make this distinction real quick. Heartburn. Heartburn is a symptom of persistent retrosternal or behind the sternum burning and discomfort. And GERD is a condition in which reflux of the stomach acids goes up, which causes the symptoms of heartburn. Okay, But heartburn is just a symptom, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have GERD. Okay, So stay with me on this. We have... All the people that are usually diagnosed with GERD, okay, gastroesophageal reflux disease, out of all these people, 70, 70% actually have NERD, which is non-erosive reflux disease, which basically means they're not getting the stomach acids going back up and causing lesions in the stomach, which is causing the symptom. So they're, so, hold on. So of those 70% that have NERD, 50%, have functional heartburn. So what does this tell us? Um, the thought process, what this means, the thought process, no acid, no heartburn is completely obsolete. So they've done some studies with high frequency intraluminal ultrasonography or ultrasound and found a correlation between heartburn and 
abnormally long time frames of the longitudinal muscles uh, of the esophagus that were contracted for too long of a time. And the muscle contractions, these muscle contractions can absolutely occur in the absence of acid. Okay, so you don't have to have acid reflux in order for these muscles to contract and spasm. But it gives you the symptom of heartburn. So basically, medication is the primary treatment for GERD, NERD, and functional heartburn. However, the medication really only works with GERD. And remember, 70% of the people diagnosed with GERD really have NERD or functional heartburn. And so the, the medication is not very successful with this group. So what's the next step when the medication doesn't work? Well, they do have what's called a fundoplication surgery, where they wrap the upper part of your stomach around the lower part of your esophagus. Ugh, that doesn't sound too good to me, right? That's, I, I, I don't think you would want to do that. And especially when you find out the results that we get with the NYK system, I'm going to say that is not the option that you want to take. So let's talk about the NYK system and the results that we get in treating acid reflux or uh, these heartburns, GERD, NERD, and functional heartburn. So most people stand up after the first treatment from an NYK uh, treatment. They stand up and they notice a huge difference. A lot of people will say, hmm, it's gone, like that. Again, this is with the first treatment. I have a lot of confidence in treating this condition. So the treatments for this are a little bit different. They're combination treatments that we cover in the third class that I teach, which is the ANS class, which is what I call the certification class, because once you take all three classes, you're certified in the technique. So when we're looking at this problem, we're looking at three things basically. There's the esophageal sphincter. So it's, it's the, the closing apparatus between the esophagus and the stomach. And so it possibly is not closing properly. We're looking at the diaphragm. So the diaphragm helps the esophageal sphincter close and stay closed. Okay, so maybe there's a problem with the diaphragm in, in helping the esophageal sphincter close. And then the third thing that we look at is, is the stomach actually producing too much acid? So... What we do, we can look at very specific postural imbalances to determine which one of these is probably causing the issue. Now, there's some other postural imbalances that we can look at, but these three that I'm going to talk about make up the bulk of what you're going to find with most people. Um, and if a person has any one of these three postural imbalances, my confidence level goes through the roof that this treatment is going to work. So the first postural imbalance that I look for is to see if the scapula are off, your shoulder blades, okay? So usually one will be higher than the other, or one will be further away from the spine than the other. So if a person has one, this postural imbalance, then their diaphragm is probably not working properly to help the esophageal sphincter close to keep that stomach acid from coming up, okay? The second postural imbalance that I look for is to see if the person has rounded shoulders, okay? And so they're, they're usually not going to be hunched over. So it's not usually going to be this and this. It's usually just the upper part. It's just the upper part of their shoulders are rounded in this way, okay? So it's kind of a slight little thing that you're going to see, but you're going to see it just right, right there. And... Um, normally it's on both sides. It's not usually just one side. Normally it's both sides, but it can be just one side, okay? But if the person has this postural imbalance, then it means that they're probably there's a problem with the esophageal sphincter not closing properly itself. And then the third postural imbalance that I look for is to see if the person is laterally flexed or basically if they're leaning to one side. And it's going to be kind of subtle again. So you're going to see a curve, though. If you look from the bottom of the neck to the belly button, They'll, there'll be a curve right here. One shoulder will be kind of higher than the other, and there'll be a curve in their in their stance like this. And it may not be that it may not be that pronounced, right? It may be slight, a little bit slighter, but they'll have this curve that kind of goes up um, from there. If if they have that, then basically it's the stomach is probably producing too much stomach acid. Now. Like I said earlier, these are combination treatments. And so I can't really go into a lot of detail 
on that because uh, it would take a lot of time to explain and I'm not really sure anyone wants to sit through that because it's a lot easier to demonstrate it than it is to just listen and sit through somebody uh, you know talking about the the combination treatments and stuff but um, if you know someone who suffers with GERD or that and they're probably not gonna get diagnosed with this but they may get diagnosed with NERD or they may get diagnosed with functional heartburn or acid reflux, right? If you know anybody that suffers with this condition, you can check and see if they have any of these three postural imbalances. And if they do, you can have tremendous success in helping them get rid of this for good. Because I have a lot, if they come in with those postures, now again, there's, there's other postures that they can come in with, but if they come in with those specific ones, my confidence level goes through the roof that, that it's going to work, okay? The symptoms um, usually disappear after the first treatment, but we need to go through the treatment protocol to make sure that it doesn't return. So we want to we want to balance the posture. So when we do a treatment, like if they're coming in like that, we want to make sure that we get their posture balanced, and then usually their symptoms are going to change with that. Um, and then we want them to come in before their posture goes back out again. So. When we do that, we can then start putting more and more time between the treatments until we work ourselves out um, uh, till, till we get, you know, once a month treatments. And I like to do that about three times in a row. And, and then we can say, okay, what else do you want to do? At this point, we can kind of switch you over to a different type of treatment if you want. We can do a one-hour relaxation massage. And everybody's like, ooh, yeah, that sounds good. But that way, they can stay ahead of their problem. Because what we found, and you guys know this to be true if you've worked on anybody, is um, you can get somebody balanced. You can get them feeling better. They go back and they do their job. They go back and they do their hobbies and the repetitive things that they do in their job and in their hobbies. They will end up back in the position and in the condition that they came in with originally. It may take you know months or years for them to get back there, but typically they'll end up back in that situation again. So we want to prevent that from happening. And they don't have to keep coming in and getting this treatment, but they need to stay up with some sort of treatment. I'm a big, big proponent of that. So um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Put in the comments below if there's another condition that you would like me to talk about. We can eliminate physical pain. We can restore function. We don't just impact the people that we treat. We impact who they interact with as well. We are making a difference. Woo. If you made it this far, smile.